What if physical therapy didn't exist anymore? Have you ever thought about it? This is going to be very important for those of y'all who are interested in becoming physical therapists. If uh, you're trying to get into PT school, you're trying to get accepted into PT school, or you recently got accepted, this is going to be insanely important uh, because it's a real question. Like, will PT exist? I actually remember a very specific time when uh, we had someone comment on one of our YouTube videos uh, because obviously what we do is help students get into PT school. And they were like, stop helping these students get into PT school when the profession won't even really exist in a few years or the profession is going downhill or this is not a profession that people actually want to be in anymore uh stop misdirecting them so we've seen that we've seen uh, i had a ci my last clinical instructor in pt school when i was just about to graduate just about to start pt school uh sat me down and told me that if he could do it all over again he would not have become a physical therapist so it's like now you start to wonder is this is this a belief that a lot of people have and are these signs that physical therapy might not exist in uh the not so distant future and then there's this increasing cost of school i mean i'm sure you've noticed it right <laughs> school's getting very very expensive but the pay of physical therapists has not changed all that much. So that's what I want to talk about because this is real. And if that sounded a little heavy, it's, it's because I want it to be because uh, these are real life scenarios. These are real situations. These are, these are real things that you will encounter as a future physical therapist or on your journey to getting into PT school. And, and why this is critical is because if you're going to use all this time and energy to get into PT school or get through PT school, don't you want it to be worth something? Don't you want it to be worth it? Don't you want it to be something that you don't regret? 10 years from now, 15 years from now, 20 years from now. That's why this conversation is critical. But before I go any further, my name is Joseph Gugi. I am a physical therapist. I'm one of the, I'm one of the co-founders of Pre-PT Grind and Cash and Class University. Uh, and what we've done for years is we've helped students get into physical therapy school without wasting time or money, as well as uh, helping them graduate debt free so that they can live out their best career. And in this video, I really want to break down the, the key elements of uh, what if physical therapy uh, did not exist anymore? Because there are some thoughts that it's only a matter of time it's only a matter of time before school is too expensive for anyone to even want to get into the profession it's only a matter of time before people are frustrated enough with the fact that they're being underpaid and overworked that they won't even want to be in the profession it's only, it's only a matter of time it's only a matter of time and fear fear is one way to look at the world but i also believe that when there's a direction or a path of fear there's always an equal opportunity to take advantage of new opportunities and change and growth that can really create a new level of opportunities within a career, within anything in life. And so physical therapy is no different. If we keep doing things the old way, there is a possibility <laughs> that that fear could come to life. Uh, but there's a few things that I want to make clear to you as a student, as a, a pre-PT, as a physical therapy student that, that might help. And if, if what I'm about to say next helps you or is clear or is valuable, then please share this with someone else that uh, could benefit from this as well. And, and then of course, uh, hopefully we can create an absolutely amazing future for not only physical therapy, but for the people that we serve. But uh, before I go any further, I want you to, to imagine that reality for a second with me. So imagine that physical therapy disappears. Like there's no physical therapy. There is no outpatient clinics. There's no uh, acute care PT. There is no physical therapy after getting surgery. There is no physical therapy to help someone get back on their feet without needing an operation, without needing medication, all the different pieces. What would that world look like? Just ask yourself for a second, like, what would that world look like? Does it make, is that a world that makes sense to you? Because it surely doesn't make sense to me, knowing obviously what physical therapy does. But I think sometimes we are, we can be so naive to the fact that we think, oh yeah, like we always need PT and all that stuff that we forget to ignore some of the real, I would even call them threats to us being able to do that long enough. Because at the end of the day, physical therapy is, yes, it's a service, but more importantly, it's a career, right? So th this is a career that you want to feel happy about, you want to feel fulfilled about. And when you're going into work as a PT, you're, you're doing it, yes, because you love helping people, but you're also trying to take care of your own livelihood. You're, you're trying to take care of your family. You're trying to, uh, you have your own dreams as well. And so at, at some point, those two can clash to where the, the problems that come with it can feel so heavy and so so big compared to the dream of becoming a physical therapist. Is, is this making sense so far? Please let, let me know in the comment section below. Everything is clicking because I want to make sure that this is clear. But chances are this is not a conversation you're going to hear from a lot of people in this way. Most people will either tell you, no, don't worry about it. Everything is great. Keep going. It's a great career because, I don't know, because we help people. Or the other extreme of, uh, well, this is, uh, you're going to invest all this money. You're going to be in so much debt. It's going to be terrible. It's going to be a worst investment ever. There, there, there's so many extremes 
extremes, right? One side is very naive and the other side is very negative and, and, and both are not healthy. They're, 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 there's a sweet spot in the middle where you can be aware of the reality of what's actually going on within PT and you can see it, right? School costs, all that stuff. It, it's, it's all there. It's all in the open. You can Google it, right? Uh, but there's always a next step. There, there's always certain things you can do to have an amazing combination of the two to where you can live the dream but also not have the negatives affect your life, whether that's debt or whether that's feeling overwhelmed, whether that's feeling overworked. And that's something that I want you to be very aware of, especially as you're going into this profession is what would happen if we stopped existing? And for most of us, it's like, wow, that's not a good situation. Some of us maybe thought about a family member that were like, oh, that family member wouldn't have been able to get back to doing certain things. My grandma wouldn't have been able to get back to being mobile and, and being active um, and, and moving around, walking, um, family members, athletes, some of y'all are athletes who are like, man, I wouldn't be able to get back to playing soccer, basketball, baseball, all the different things, football. And so so physical therapy, if it, exi if it stopped existing, that causes problems. So the question now becomes, are we going to just pursue physical therapy simply because we know that the world needs PT and all that stuff and ignore the other things? Or are we going to learn how to deal with the actual real obstacles of becoming a physical therapist so that we can have a career that not only survives for you, but survives for the people that come after us? Because even in 100 years, there's still going to be a need for what we do in physical therapy. Does that make sense? And so one thing that I think is very important for you to understand is that there's a shift happening, right? That shift is uh, connected to debt. It's connected to money. It's connected to how we think and innovate within physical therapy. And it, it's, it's something that I think is going to become mandatory for us to actually stay within this career. What, whether that looks like saying, okay, well, I can't complain. So let's talk about school debt, for example. So a lot of us are like, well, maybe it'll get figured out later, especially as a student. We're like, well, like, like I know that's a real concern. I, I know that schools are being more and more expensive. And side note, like the pay of physical therapists hasn't changed in proportion to the cost of school, which is weird, but we can't argue our way into getting the schools to making things less expensive. Uh, we can't wait for the government to save us. Uh, we can't wait for our future employers to save us. And so part of it is asking ourselves, what are the things that I can control or take control of starting now as a student who wants to become a physical therapist, who doesn't want to be like Joseph's clinical instructor who told me that if he could do it all over again, he would not have become a physical therapist. A big part of that was because of the money. He had, uh, he was 32 years into the profession and he was just like, yo, like this is not worth it. He was frustrated. He felt capped, he felt drained and his earning potential had not gone up. And so you could either go down that path and, and probably be frustrated down the line and keep, keep in mind, at one point, he loved physical therapy. At one point, he just loved the idea of being able to help people move and walk, all the things that you love. But there are some other things that are real, <laughs> life, income, your family, all the things that you want, growth. And so when you can't do those things, it becomes frustrating at some point, which is where I've even had classmates that, of mine, I've shared this before, I've, I've, had, I've had some of my classmates leave the profession for that reason. And so, uh, so, so as a student, I have to start thinking, how can I get ahead of that? And how can I take charge of it myself? Because if the profession is going to live on, then I have to figure out how to still make it worth the investment for me. Does that make sense? Because what happens is, and I've shared this before, but here's what starts to happen very quickly. So let's talk about the, the, the money component, right? So what starts to happen very quickly is number one, I either fall out of love with it because I'm just drained. I'm not out of love with helping people. I'm out of love with the frustration of feeling like I'm putting in so much work, but I'm never getting time off. I'm, I'm working so many different hours. I'm seeing two to three patients an hour. It's draining me. I only get two two weeks of vacation every single year. My dream of traveling overseas is gone. My ability to be present with my family is limited because when I come home, I'm just tired. My weekends are spent just catching up on sleep or having a part-time job so that we can maybe get ahead in life. And so all of a sudden, it, it only takes so long before you're like, whoa, there has to be a different way to do this. And so, so part of it is saying, how can I take charge of that right now? One of the first things you can do is figuring out how to, as a student, graduate with as little school debt as possible, mainly because you're not having to fight that hill after you're done with school. And part of that requires saying, okay, cool. Like, how can I learn the scholarship game? How can I learn how to increase my income? How can I learn how to get paid more money as a student, by the way, like you don't have to wait until you're a physical therapist. I don't know where we got that idea. Uh, maybe it's because we have professors that tell us we can't, I don't know. It's, listen, the, the same professors that tell you whatever they are going to tell you about income or whatnot are the same ones that are not going to help you pay off your schooling. So just start thinking for yourself and ask yourself, okay, are there people that have figured this out? Are there students that have been able to figure out how to generate income while in school? Are there people that have been figure, able to figure out how to do scholarships the right way so that they can 
have literally their school debt eliminated, which we have students that are doing that right now, which makes it very, very doable. And you can do it as well. But you have to start saying, I can't be an average student anymore. I can't be an average physical therapist. Here's what an average student looks like. An average student is like, you know what? I'm just going to put up the blinders. I'm only going to focus on my academics and that's it. The rest will figure itself out later. You graduate 150K in debt, 200K in debt plus. That's average, right? The average physical therapist, I'm going to ignore the debt. I'm just going to work an average job as a staff PT, get paid 70 to $75,000 a year. That's before taxes. With taxes, it goes down even more. It comes down to close to $3,000 a month when you figure everything out, which means that, think about that. $3,000 a month, what can that really get you when it comes to your dreams, when it comes to where you live, when it comes to the state that you live in, all the different pieces, and all of a sudden you start thinking, crap, I'm gonna have to either have a second job as a PT, as a doctor of physical therapy, by the way, or, or I'm gonna have to do a setting that maybe pays more, but doesn't fulfill me. So like, for example, I am an outpatient physical therapist. I love being an outpatient PT. Outpatient PTs don't make the most in general for like as a staff PT. So, but like if I go to a skilled nursing facility, for example, I might get paid more, but that doesn't fulfill me. So I know that if I'm in that space, it, like, like it'll pay me more, but I'll feel more drained because it's not as fulfilling. It's not the space where I get life. And I know for me, like I thrive off, like, like I'm able to give people more when I'm in a space where I just feel like, I don't know, when I feel fulfilled, I'm able to give way more. Like, like take even the content that, that we produce for y'all. Have y'all noticed that we actually enjoy creating content for y'all? It's because we feel fulfilled when we are helping y'all have amazing careers. And so it's the same exact thing when it comes to you as uh, as a future PT. Just, just keep that in mind. Sometimes we're so short-sighted as individuals, we're only thinking about the next exam, the next semester, the next year that we forget that five years from now the things that we're ignoring will come back to bite us 10 years from now 15 years from now but you are in control you can control that but now start imagining the other side what would it look like to start figuring those things out to start taking things into your hands to be able to generate 1000 2000 3000 5000 10000 plus a month while in school and it's real like i'm not saying made up stuff we have a student that's doing 15 to 23000 dollars a month and she just finished her first year of pt school and, and that's not unrealistic it just means that you probably have never learned the right skills to be able to do that and scholarships we've had students that have done as much as 100k plus in in, in in scholarships for pt school who are able to graduate with no debt and now they can also add the skills of generating more income and now they're just making money while in school and when they graduate they have such a positive net worth that it's crazy. And they, they don't have options. They're the type of person that can actually work part time and still get paid more than the average physical therapist and still be able to travel and do all the different pieces and still feel fulfilled when they're showing up to work. You have to choose which one do you want. The one that most of y'all have been told is a very old school way of approaching the profession and even careers in general. Side note, I know good and well that most of y'all actually love options even, right, in life. And so this is this is where the world is moving, but for physical therapy to thrive, we're gonna have to start taking charge of those things ourselves as students. Does that make sense? And so, so that's what I wanted to cover today. What if physical therapy didn't exist anymore? Um, start thinking about that and then ask yourself, am I making the decisions that will make sure that five, 10, 15, 20 years from now, I still feel like this was the best decision of my life? Or am I ignoring things that will lead to me regretting the path that I'm going on one year out? I've had, literally, I had classmates leave the profession less than a year out of PT school. So if that happens to them, you have to start thinking, what is it that happened? Clearly they were excited when they were pre-PTs. Clearly they were excited when they finished their doctorate degree because they were on this high. They were a doctor of physical therapy. They were probably excited the first few months of being a PT and then something clicked. The question is, do I need to wait until I'm in that position or can I start figuring it out now as a student? So, so I hope that made sense. But here's the cool part. The cool part is I'm never going to talk to you about something that we don't we don't already have a solution for you for. Is that cool? So we're actually going to be doing a two-day event this year, this September, uh, the, the first weekend of September uh, in, in Tampa, Florida, where we're actually going to be teaching you how to do all the things that I was talking about in this training. It's called the New Money PT Live event, and it's going to be brilliant, but we're going to teach you everything from, number one, how to generate enough money or more money than you can even imagine, more money than the average PT uh, makes so that you can pay your way through school. We have students right now paying their way through school in cash and having extra on the side, which is crazy. Uh, but most of us have, have just never been taught how to do it. Uh, we're also going to be talking about scholarships as well, like how to um, get like $50,000 in scholarship money, $25,000 in scholarship money, $75,000, uh, $100,000 plus in scholarship money. And you're going to be hearing from people that have actually done it. And so if you want that and you're like, yo, I need to figure this out because I actually want to feel fulfilled in my career 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now, then go to newmoneyptlive.com. After that event is done, I don't know if we'll do it again. We did do it last year. It was brilliant. It was amazing. Uh, and this year we've already doubled 
the amount of people that came last year, we've already doubled that number in the tickets sold for this year's event. So you definitely don't want to miss out if that is you. Now, if you don't care and you're like, you know what, I'm just going to kind of do things the old school way and I'll just figure it out later and probably regret my career, then feel free to not do it. Right. So uh, but go to newmoneyptlive.com. We want to help you have a career that you will never, never, never regret. So I hope this was helpful. And if this was valuable to you, please be sure to like, subscribe, uh, share this out with any friends that um, you believe would value it. And we'll see you on the next training. Have a good one. Bye.